we are going to continue explaining the work and energy chapter. We're going to start by a new paragraph that talks about the kinetic energy. Consider a car that is moving on the highway. When the driver applies the brakes, the driver stops after covering a distance of 5 meters. During braking, friction occurs between the ground and the wheels. This will produce heat or thermal energy. Here we can ask a question. What is the origin of this thermal energy? It is due to the motion of the car after braking. When the car stops, no thermal energy will be produced. Then according to the principle of conservation of energy that states that energy is neither created nor destroyed, it is only transferred, the transformation into thermal energy is due to the motion of the car or to the energy of motion. This energy of motion is called the kinetic energy. In general, all bodies that are in motion acquire an energy that is called the kinetic energy. That is, an energy of motion that depends on the speed. Once again, consider that the car moves at a greater speed and the driver wants to stop the car over the same distance. Therefore, he has to apply a greater amount of braking force. And as a result, the produced heat will be of a greater amount. Also, will the produced thermal energy be. And as a result, the energy of motion of the car would have a greater value. When the speed of the car increases, so will its kinetic energy as well. Consider a third situation where the car has passengers in it. The mass will be greater. The driver wants to stop the car over the same distance of 5 meters. By using the brakes, he must apply a greater braking force. And as a result, the car will produce more thermal energy. Then the kinetic energy also depends on the mass of the car. In conclusion, the kinetic energy is an energy of motion that depends on the speed of the moving body and its mass. Now for the expression of the kinetic energy for a particle. For a particle. This is a particle of mass m that is moving with the velocity v. The particle acquires a kinetic energy. Ke equals to half m v squared. This is the expression of the kinetic energy for a particle of mass m in kilograms having a speed v that is expressed in meters per second. And the unit of the kinetic energy is the joule. Now what about a system of particles? For a system of particles. A system of particles is made of several particles having masses m1, m2, m3, moving at velocities v1, v2, v3, etc. What is by definition the kinetic energy for this system? It is equal to the sum of the kinetic energies of the particles. So it is half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared plus half m3 v3 squared and so on. And as an example, 
Let us calculate the kinetic energy of two particles. This is the first particle of mass 10 grams and is moving with a velocity of value 10 meters per second. And another particle of mass 20 grams This particle is moving at a velocity of value 5 meters per second. The kinetic energy of this system is equal to the sum of the kinetic energies of the two particles. That is, half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared. Now pay attention to convert the grams to kilograms. So we get half times 10 times 10 exponent minus 3 times 10 squared plus half times 20 times 10 exponent minus 3 times 5 squared. And the result is 0 0.75 joules. Now for a solid in translation. For a solid in translation. What do we mean by a solid in translation? A solid is a non-deformable system. A solid in translation has all its particles move with identical velocities at every instant. Consider a solid that is in translation. This is a particle of it, of mass m1 having velocity v. Another particle of mass m2 moves with the same velocity v, another particle m3 will move with the same velocity v, and so on. As a result, the kinetic energy of the solid in translation is equal to the sum of the kinetic energies of the particles of the solid. So it's half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared plus half m3 v3 squared, and so on. Now we can take v squared as a common factor. So we get half into m1 plus m2 plus m3, etc., multiplied by v squared. As a result, m1 plus m2 plus m3, etc., represents the total mass of the solid. So the answer would be half m v squared for a solid in translation. In this example, Let's consider a box of mass 50 kilograms. This box is moving with a velocity v in this direction that has a magnitude of 50 kilometers per hour. In this example, the box is a solid that moves on a rectilinear path. Thus, the box is considered to be a solid in translation. The kinetic energy of this box is equal to half m v squared, which is equal to half times 50 multiplied by the speed. Now we have to convert the speed from kilometers per hour to meters per second. 50 kilometers over one hour. This is 50 times 10 exponent 3 meters over 3,600 seconds. The speed becomes 13.9 meters per second. As a result, the kinetic energy is approximately equal to 4,830 joules. For a solid in rotation, 
a solid in rotation is a non-deformable system where all of its particles rotate in the same direction with the same angular speed around an axis of rotation. We're going to give the expression of the kinetic energy of a solid in rotation by using an analogy with the solid in translation. Recall Newton's second law for a solid in translation. It is the sum of external forces equals to m times the acceleration. For a solid in rotation, the sum of the moments of the external forces is equal to I times theta W prime. F in translation, the moment in rotation. The mass M in translation, the moment of inertia I in rotation. The acceleration A in translation, the angular acceleration theta W prime in rotation. Now for its formula, half times. The mass in translational motion is replaced by the moment of inertia in rotational motion. The speed V in translational motion is replaced by the angular speed theta prime in rotation. Thus the expression of the kinetic energy for a solid in rotation is given by half I theta prime squared. This energy is expressed in joules, theta prime in radians per second, and I is in kilogram meter square. Consider the following application. The homogeneous disk is rotating around its axis of rotation delta with an angular speed of 20 radians per second. The radius of the disk is 10 centimeters and its mass is 5 kilograms. We want to find the kinetic energy of the disk. The kinetic energy for a solid in rotation is equal to half I theta prime squared. I is the moment of inertia of the disk and theta prime is its angular speed. To determine the moment of inertia of the disk with respect to delta, we use the formula for the disk. I equals to half mr squared, half times 5 times 10 times 10 exponent minus 2 all of it squared. And the answer is 0 0.025 kilogram meter squared. Now by replacing the values, we get that the kinetic energy is equal to half times 0 0.025 times 20 squared and the result is 5 joules.